got here. I've got a splitting headache. Does anyone hear me? Base, do you copy? Are you there? It's probably nothing serious. No damage to the suit or bone structure. Just <clears throat> this headache. for a moment. My receiver's dead, but the transmitter may still be working. detected either. There are many supplies, which would suggest a quick recce. Or was it just the end of the mission? Oh, let's see if the past me hasn't failed the present me. And let's hope she took notes. We and Regis three. Does not ring any bells. And my crew have no way to tell me. So I report that I have no recollection of this planet. The last thing I remember. Hang on. We've closed the research cycle. We, we were already in hibernation. Flying back. It's my blackout a side effect of metabolic depression. That would be bizarre. For some reason, our crew split into two groups. First one set up camp. I wonder if I was with them. Or am I on my way there? Both groups landed in the same place. We took two landers to the surface. I don't usually do this. Maybe the first one broke. The first group explored the ocean with no biologist. It's weird. And the other one, just me, took a different route. Leading to... 
Right. I was heading straight to the camp. Must be somewhere near. Give me a sign. Send up a flare, the probe. Anything. Okay. I'm gonna head to the camp, but I'll be keeping an eye out for you. Landmarks. Well done, past me. <laughs> you didn't disappoint after all. Oh, I sound like. I need to stop doing this. An object I called Needle. That rope. I, I think it's mine. I'll try to retrieve it later. It might come in handy. Right. It resembles the eye of a needle. We have the first one. I need one more. I'm looking for something that resembles a dog. Bingo! I found the dog! I report that I have established my position. Time to hit the road. I see our ship. You're not leaving without me, are you? I'm in a canyon, which doesn't make it easy to navigate. The data's trustworthy, and you're close by. More dropped equipment. I must have hit the ground pretty hard. A metal detector. Dr. Borsky, you won't be pleased. More equipment to repair. The detector's dead. Guess I shouldn't just leave it like this. Broken or not.
is water on this desert planet. <clears throat> oh, I have something on the tracker. I assume it's no one from the crew, so perhaps it's my beacon. for me on your trackers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another liquid that did not allow the biosynosis to fall. Might be easy to replenish drinking supplies. Not without tests. Filtration, as we all remember. Third rule. So, so, fine, I guess. Hmm. You're still groggy. Stay put, all right? Dr. Gorski doesn't look so well. How are you holding up, Gorski? Don't get up just yet. Is it really so hard for you to remember a couple of simple rules? I have to stretch my legs. They're numb. Hibernation will do that. Just sit for a while. Here, take it, and remember the third rule. Yes, I know. Stay hydrated. In small sips. Always the first one to get up. I don't know how you do it, Murray. It's a matter of habit. After so many cycles of cryogenic sleep, one either gets used to it or becomes a tortoise. Will you help me here? Sure, I'm coming. This is not our system. Has anyone noticed we're in the wrong place? Kovel, it's not a good time. Yasna, look for yourself. This is not the right planet. You shouldn't be walking yet. Kovel, could you stop it? I'm telling you, we woke up in the wrong place. Yes, we heard you. Enough of this, Yasna. Crew. Astrogator. Debating chamber in 15 minutes. Uh, this can't be good. Guess we'll find out. But first, here, hold on to it and remember.
time to go. We found a way out of the valley, leading more or less towards the camp. This way. This area is volcanically active. Ash outbursts and extreme temperature changes may explain the extinction of local fauna and flora. But it's all just too idyllic. There's no dust in the air. The sky is clear and the soil looks like laterite to me. Perhaps not highly fertile, but not entirely barren. On some planets, such storms last for several hundred days. I hope it's not one of them.
over 400 meters in a straight line. I, I see you. Can you hear me? I just need to get down from here. The escarpment is about 10 meters high. It looks like I could slide down. On second thought, maybe not. The last thing I need now is an injury. Out of the frying pan. Into the fire. At least I can hook the rope here. Great. A root that won't break my neck. <laughs> from here. I'll be with you soon. much closer to my destination. I must have walked for some time. But... I don't remember it. Did... Did I black out again? Closer to the camp. Find a place to land. I need to get back to Dragonfly as soon as possible. Go to the infirmary and do a full set of tests on myself.
Just third satellite. Astrogator, sir. Crew? Dr. Gorski, right on time. Any updates? We have a set of data from the near surface probe. How's the activity? Zero, zero, and two. So, less than nothing. Atmosphere? Nitrogen, 78%. Argon, 2%. Carbon dioxide, zero. Methane, 4%. The rest is oxygen. Uh, wait, that's 16%. With oxygen concentration as such, there should be life. At least some microbes. And yet we have detected no traces. Yeah, we'll get to that later. Let's finish with the probe readings first. Air radioactivity? It's virtually zero. The word of paradise. No radioactivity, no endospores, no bacteria, no mold, no viruses, nothing. Just the oxygen. If there were no living organisms on the continent, there shouldn't be this much of it. What if life develops on some other continents here? No, I doubt it. Insulation outside the equatorial zone. You don't see how thick the polar ice caps are, Doctor. I can guarantee a minimum of five miles of ice sheet. Potentially six. Mm, that's true. There's more chance of something in the ocean. Some seaweed, algae. But why didn't life migrate to the land? Could be because of hard radiation. Mm, I don't think so. According to the probe readings, the ground activity is exceptionally low for this part of the galaxy. I wonder if some special kind of drought intolerant evolution occurred here. Mm, that would at least explain some of the abnormalities. Hmm. Anyway, we'll have to take a look under the water. First, it would be good to know what time frame we're working with. Marit, do you have the geological analysis? It's a bit too early for mature conclusions, but this planet looks old to me. Such a fossilized egg must be at least six billion years old. Besides, the sun's seen better days too. It's almost a red dwarf. Any rare resources, forms, creatures? We can't expect such detailed data, sir. Not from this distance. Yes, we would have to explore the surface. Astrogator, what exactly are we looking for? The value of this planet. For now, it may seem like the pinnacle of nonsense. But I assure you that Regis III is not without worth. With all due respect, Astrogator, I have the impression you're not telling us everything. As always, Dr. Koval, your instincts are correct. Please forgive my reticence. My goal was to maintain unimpeded research neutrality. There is indeed a very important factor of interest in this planet. The Alliance. The Alliance? Oh, the Alliance? Correct. What do they have to do with it? Well, they've sent their most powerful unit here. But to our best knowledge, Condor's traversing a distant quadrant. Well, I'm not talking about the Condor. So, the Invincible? Good guess, Doctor. A steel behemoth with the power to produce billions of kilowatts in a split second, converting it into energy fields that no material body can penetrate, concentrating it into destructive rays as hot as stars that can reduce a mountain range to dust or evaporate an ocean, together with its crew of almost a hundred men, professionals that are neither better nor worse than us. Well, I dare to say we're better trained, Astrogator. They are, however, unquestionable masters of propaganda. I know that some accomplishments they brag about are very much far-fetched, but the capabilities of the Invincible are not subject to doubt. And we as the scientific body should sever ourselves from the emotional and symbolic facade. In other words, we cannot ignore facts just because we don't like them, Mr. Cole. All right, but where do we stand in all this? 
together with our, may I say, not quite as numerous staff. Despite our modest forces, we still have a chance to gain a critical advantage over the Alliance while avoiding confrontation. Okay, uh, and how would we do that? Simple. We leave this planet before the Invincible arrives here. Which is when, exactly? Well, they're still far away. <laughs> Astrogator, please, how much time do we have to conduct safe research? Thirteen days. There's no time to lose, then. I appreciate your eagerness, Cove. Dr. Crowther, do we need full gear? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Also, I caution you against taking off your helmets for a prolonged duration. This amount of methane is not neutral. Breathing the local atmosphere will lead to saturation drop. And you may start showing symptoms of mild brain damage, feel stupefied. But uh, don't worry, not before an hour or even a couple of hours. I see. Dr. Gorski, will you program Artie to collect samples? Of course. Marit, Krauto, please prepare for the surface. Koval, you too. You're leaving early in the morning. And what about me? You're staying on board, Doctor. But Astrogator... Uh, this is not up for debate. I need you here. As you well know, there's not much work to do for a biologist on Regis Three, if any. Well, if I was ordered to stay, what the hell am I doing here? Failed. This is Dr. Yasna reporting. Do you copy? I'm entering the campgrounds. I is anyone out there? Oh, it's just Andrew Bot. Have you made changes to the Androbot's algorithms <laughs> without telling anyone? <laughs> Again. Ah, oh, well. Never mind. Default position. I don't know what's wrong with you, buddy, but you clearly don't want to cooperate. I've located Dr. Crowther. He's in bad shape. I'm gonna examine him now. Hello. Anyone there? I repeat, Crowther is in a serious condition. Yes, sir. 
Can you hear me? Astrogator. Finally. I've been listening to you for two hours now. My receiver is dead. No need to explain yourself, Doctor. I know everything. The transmitter was still working, so I heard your reports. Glad you didn't lose your head. Wait, please. I need to reconnect. Testing, one, two, three. Ah, copy you, Doctor. Loud and clear, but to the point. As I understand it, there's only Doctor Crowther at the camp, and he's not well. What happened to him? I... I was just about to examine him. Dr. Crowther, please don't be startled. I need to take your hand. Temperature normal. Pulse two. O2 saturation is fine. There's nothing physically wrong with the doctor. His pupils respond properly. Look at my finger. No delay in reactions. Yet no response to verbal communication. None. Conclusions, Doctor. Do you have any idea what's wrong with him? Akinesia, mutism, impoverishment of mimic movements, and reaction to stimuli. These are all symptoms of stupor. But it's difficult to pinpoint the cause of the disorder. We need to quickly perform a complete set of tests and focal plane tomography of his brain. Otherwise, I won't be able to say anything more. I'll prepare the infirmary. But first things first, the lab. We need to get you all on board. Everyone, not just Dr. Crowther. Couldn't we just evacuate him right away? If it were that easy, I would have sent the hopper long ago. Please look for the mission log. It should include crucial data about the crew's activities. We have three more people to find. And you still need to designate a place for the landing. Hello? A anyone else here? I found Dr. Crowther. It's not a mission log, but it will do. Dr. Crowther kept records. Meticulous as always. What's in there? Dr. Gorski has moved away from the research sector to the west. Ah, that's right. Followed those deposits of metal. Metal? That's why we have detectors. Correct. Mine died, but Crowther had one as well, didn't he? Like everyone in the crew, Doctor. The most important thing is probably the landing coordinates. BA-2316. Noting. 316. Excellent. I'm uploading the data. Starting calibration. Are you looking for the detector? Yeah, just a sec. Got it. Please make sure it works. I don't understand why it wouldn't. It's a rather reliable piece of equipment. Like everything around, it's already broke. Checked. I'm leaving the tent. All right. Now for the robot. It's unresponsive. Yes, I know. I'm currently trying to establish a connection. Can I help somehow? You must look for the others, Doctor. I'll take care of this myself. Get the tin head back on its feet remotely. And secure Crowther. I have everything I need, just... Is something wrong with the connection, sir? It's not working. I'm not sure why. 
There's a relay transmitter in the camp, so the signal should be strong enough. A relay? Huh. Yasna, what are you up to? One sec. I'm looking for it. What about the rest of the crew? You're gonna make them wait? If the Androbot isn't working properly, I can't just leave Krauter like this. He might hurt himself. Uh, fine. Proceed as you deem fit. Focus. What now? No. No point in going back this way. <sighs> I found the area marked by Dr. Crowther. There's no one around. I think so. Solid ground. A large flat area. We won't find a better place. Entry point? Will it be 50 meters? Air accessibility is paramount. Yes. It's relatively clean. You can send Hopper, sir. It's like the rocks at the landing area. The, the ones drawn by Crowther. But the doctor marked a waypoint. I don't recall... It's, it's just a sketch. No markings. Well, if so, we should do it. What would you call them? <clears throat> These rocks are white as bones. Bones, then. I'm writing that down. Me too. One more thing, Astrogator. The bones are, well, literally almost white. Unlike the environments around them. Yes, thank you. That's valuable information. Be useful in navigating. Entering the research area. Clear for now. Tracker? Silent. By the way, what did they find here? Oh, right. You don't remember. A piece of metal sticking out of the ground. Sounds inconspicuous, but in this desert environment, it's a phenomenon. The artifact. Got someone! 
are following the signal. It's here. I can see the structure. I'm in the right place. Understood. Please continue. Geological cross-section? Measurements? These are Merritt's notes. Oh, she must be somewhere close. Please search the entire area thoroughly. Signals coming from a castle from the backpack. That's concerning. Marit, wake up. Wake up. Do you hear me? No, no vital functions. What's I need two. One, two, three. next. Yes, I think so. You should be close. Do you think... Kovl? Let's not assume the worst. You'll find it, Doctor. Alive. I'm sure about that. Someone's here.
Status. Jasna. He's... He's... Koval? He's also... Don't do this to me. Not... Oh. You're alive! Did you hear that, sir? Koval's alive. I didn't doubt it for a second, Doctor. What's his current state? Checking. Parameters normal, yet he's completely unresponsive. Koval? Koval! His eyes are so empty. Just like Crouch's. Koval! What the hell is wrong with you? Are all the symptoms the same as Dr. Crouch's? He's calm. Calmer. Well, at least he's alive. Now listen to me, Asta. The lander is on its way, but before you get Dr. Cobble on board, I want you to do something. Yasna. I'm listening. Please look around for his journal. It's everywhere. In pieces. No, not good. Koval was in radio contact with Dr. Gorski. Taking notes. That's exactly why it's so important. These notes may help us find our man. I'll go over them, but it may take a while. Huh. Have you found it? No, it's, uh, nothing about Dr. Gorski. Ah. Found them. Surprisingly accurate. He wrote down Gorski's every step. Great. Let's get Cobble to the evacuation area. Can you carry... be pretty hard in 1G, but the gravity here should make things a tad easier. Degradation of equipment, recurring connectivity issues. It all has to be related to On the other hand, how could it be? There's not much on this planet. Some primitive life forms in the ocean, metal deposits in the ground. Although the latter got Dr. Gorski's interest for some reason. It's crazy how everything's falling apart here. I don't know. Maybe we're dealing with some kind of anomaly. An atmospheric or magnetic phenomenon. Uh, wouldn't something like that show on the charts? All those measurements Gorski took? I remember. Maybe he made a mistake. Gorski's left. He might have made it quite far. Agreed. Everything points to it. I don't know how long I'll be looking for him. It might take hours before I come back. 
We also don't know Gorski's condition, nor what he's going through. And Dr. Crowther doesn't. I have to go back for him. There's no need. I just regained control of the Androbot, so please leave it to me. I'll carry him as well as the... Dr. Marit's body. In the meantime, please focus on finding Gorski. I'm leaving the excavation site. Huh. How did he come down? You were correct, sir. It's just our probe. It looks inactive. Can't be completely broken if you picked up a signal. I'd say it's running in safe mode. Please try to power it on. Do we have time for this? It's for a good reason, Doctor. The probe could prove useful in the search. And besides... You'll see. Systems on. No, no, stop. Wait for my instructions. There's a button on the left side of the fuse box. Hold it, and then turn the dial again. Now go ahead. Slide records? Correct. I, I didn't know we had access to them. You couldn't have known. This is not standard procedure. But as they say, extremis malice, extrema remedia. Let's take a look. of the first days on the surface. They started exploring the littoral zone almost immediately. They reported as much. Wasn't until the fourth day the comms failed. I, I recognize these structures. This is where they began to dig. are still there. Dr. Gorski must have left already. We lost contact shortly thereafter. The probe followed him, and he followed the detector's readings. Going after those metal structures. Yes, that's what I meant. What's next? Last slide. There's mostly noise. Nothing in particular stands out to you, Doctor. They were digging and suddenly, poof, people are dead. No need to shout, Astrogator. I'm just letting you know what I see. That's all. Uh, hang on. An absurdly high electromagnetic field reading. That's something. Sort of. What are the earlier readings? Checking. Still high in the slide just before. And earlier, quite normal.
It happened in a matter of seconds. But there's... There's nothing except dunes. Sand, a few rocks, a shadow. Shadow? Another sandstorm, I guess. All right, Doctor. Let's move on. You may turn on the fuses now. We'll take the probe with us. Now I can give commands to the probe. And? What do you see? Is it working correctly? If you run it on manual steering, sir, then, then it works just fine. Hmm. That's exactly what I'm doing. You have a keen eye. I'll put it in auto mode. From now on, it will follow you, Doctor. Nice to have some company. I mean, apart from yours, sir. One second. That's odd. There's no data in the probe's memory. No ID, no nothing. Do you want to give it a new ID? Name it, basically. After all, it'll be with you for a while. So, what's it going to be? Huh. A name for the teleprobe. All right. I can think of something. Copy that. I'm listening. Please enter Luna. L. U. N. A. Done. Now, a few more tweaks, and you'll have a flying measurement sensor at your disposal. these metal structures anywhere the only surface structure report the detector's measurement is very clear i'm going straight on no crossroads branches not yet just one thick tangled vein I'm at the first clear branching of these structures, such as reported by Dr. Gorski. All right. What happened next? He followed the branch to the right. Another thing he reported was a massive vertical structure. should move. Oh, there's no time. Th 
the probe detected something. I see that in the readings. What is it exactly? Well, the structure from the notes, it fits the description perfectly. Well done, Luna. I knew I could count on you. Well, we didn't bring it to the surface for no reason. Even in the first stage procedure. As expected, it's at the bottom. Before you ask, sir, there's little to say about it. All right. So how many are left? Uh, two points. Or at least that's what he told Koval. What he did next, it's hard to assess. Well, the battery and the detector last for only a few hours, so he couldn't have gone much further. fourth point is a structure that fills a rock massive, on top of which he found surface structures. Uh, sounds like a crucial node in this whole system. tangible evidence that he was going this way. Oh, good. It's downhill all the way, Doctor. I wouldn't be so sure, Astrogator. The next point is at a height of approximately 100 meters. Definitely uphill. What if I don't find him at all? You will. Just follow his tracks carefully. According to our records, it's been no more than six hours since he was here. Think about it, Doctor. On a cosmic scale, it's nothing. But on a human scale, it could mean the difference between life and death. I think we have the fourth point. I confirm. It's the fourth one. I see our flag. for the probe. Excuse me?
I'm still here, if you're wondering, sir. It all just takes longer than expected. I know the situation. No need to explain yourself, Doctor. We're in this together. Parting. Yes, they're on their way. What's the plan for the second flight? The same place? That would work best. Certain, proven. When you and Dr. Gorski come back, I'll send the lander right away. the top. The doctor discovered something new from here. Something he called bushes. Look, I've heard that term before. In their conversations between Kovel and Gorski. No, Jasna. You're the one who reported it to me. Right after you landed. Seriously? Well, I... I... I don't see anything like it now, sir. Wait. Kovel noted down the parameters. Azimus 350. Distance 200 meters. Copy that. I'm sending the probe. Got it. I see the bushes. And the doctor? Um, hard to tell. Visibility is poor. Huh. It's going to be harder than before. I don't know how the doctor... But when it comes to finding a safe route, there won't be a problem. But you'll have to get there on your own two feet. I suppose the probe will carry out the first task. It's capable, yes? Of course. I set the environment analysis mode. The probe will calculate the best route between your location and your destination. It'll guide you along the defined path. The calculations will only take a moment. This probe of ours. Hey, can I fly for this long? Yes. Longer than you can stand on your feet. <sighs> Sounds like the perfect research unit. Maybe even better than a human. Well, let's not exaggerate. <sighs> of course, I wasn't being serious. However helpful they may be, they're still just tools in the hand of man. Often faulty. Problem. Something serious? I already mentioned the faulty machines, right? Well, a route determined by the algorithm goes over a chasm. I can repeat the command. No, no. I'll go around. Uh, unfortunately, this is an outdated model. Such mistakes are inevitable. But the perception module itself has already been greatly improved. Its accuracy increases exponentially. 
Exponentially. <laughs> Can you imagine us, proteinaceous creatures, developing so quickly, sir? No, not in the course of evolution. You can't perfect a person like that. That's right, you can't. We wait thousands of years for visible changes. Oh, have you started to fear for your position? <laughs> well, everything indicates that the clear distinction between humans and robots will soon disappear. And then what? Well, if we assume that they'll surpass us, things will get complicated. Because in order to program a brain with computing power equal to that of a human, you need a brain with computing power higher than that of a human. Ergo, a man cannot make a machine smarter than a man. Then who else would design it? Self-learning algorithms? Some spontaneous process? Or pure chaos? Something inhuman, that's for sure. Shh, Astrogator, can you hear that? Uh, what am I supposed to be hearing? That's the point. Nothing. Silence. We're talking about robots, and Dr. Gorski still hasn't spoken on the channel. Well, I don't know. He must be a long way from here. Dr. Gorski, are you here somewhere? These bushes are kind of weird. You better stay away, Doctor. I'd like a brief description. Just keep a distance. Allow me to use a language I would use to describe living forms, sir. Of course. So they look like pituitary, brush-like formations. They're high, more or less, from one to several meters. They can be singular, though in some locations they create a uniform thicket that covers the walls of the ravine in a rusty brush-like layer. They grow out of cracks in the bare rock. That's how it looks, to put it briefly. Would you also venture to guess their significance? Some function, purpose? Staying on the topic of biological analogies, which in itself is already a major scientific distortion. Yes, yes, I understand. These are not real plants. But if they were plants, those protruding parts climbing up, they would serve to obtain energy, mainly solar. Astrogator, Gorski's not here. I'm afraid he continued to explore. And if he went where I think he did, he might have lost contact with the camp as well as Dragonfly. Possibly. Well, there's only one way to be certain. It's your decision, sir. Please continue your search. We have to find him. That's the unwritten rule, isn't it? Under no circumstances do we leave anyone behind. That's right, Doctor. You can lose everything else, but you have to have the crew on board. The living and the dead. This is one of the most crucial imperatives, even though it's not in the proper stop. The line's breaking up. But I understood. I'll let you know, sir, when I come out of the tunnel.
Hopper has landed. I repeat, Hopper has landed. Astrogator, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Any side effects? Landing wasn't too hard on you? All good. Spine still in one piece. No signs of overstrain. Not even shortness of breath. Perfect. Hopefully the hike to camp goes just as smoothly. The dust has already settled. Huh. I've located the second lander. Our people are still on this planet. Ah, very good. I was afraid they might try to fly off, which wouldn't be the best idea given the loss of communication with Dragonfly. Sir, something's wrong. What is it? The hatch is half open. Did they report hydraulics failure? How should I know? You were the last person in contact with the crew, Doctor. Right. I'm inside. And? How is it? Even if they wanted to, they couldn't go back to Dragonfly. Their lander looks damaged, to put it mildly. Or more accurately, it, it seems like a storm has passed through it. Understood. I mean, I don't understand how it happened. But that means... Hopper is the only vehicle that can take us home. Affirmative. Right. Well, then we can't afford another mistake. I'm taking the lander into orbit. I'll send it directly to the camp as soon as we find a suitable landing zone. Astrogator, I think... I don't know what we expected. Coming here at the end of our expedition. The equipment is barely working works at all and you sir he barely escapes alive okay i admit that we have a very successful campaign behind us but i feel like we've used up all our luck and now we're asking for trouble it's just one planet too many for us which doesn't change the fact we're here let's focus on completing this mission there won't be another where does this certainty come from astrogator HQ can send us as many directives as they please, justified or not. I won't let that happen. We have the imprimis homini law to refer to. The Commonwealth cannot achieve its goals at the expense of the people. At the expense of my crew. But isn't that exactly what's happening? The situation is bad, Astrogator. Though it wasn't much better at the beginning of the mission. Whoever sent us here didn't care about our safety at all. Enough! Please don't put me in an even more difficult position. Rejecting a new mission and questioning the validity of the current one are two different issues. And you're one step away from disciplinary action, Doctor. Copy that. Over and out. an object in sight. This is where they searched the ocean's biosynosis. Meaning... Oh, 
where they caught that fish, right? Yeah. They stopped here first, then walked along the coastline northward. Correct. But I think you might consider taking a shortcut towards the east, straight to the camp. Copy that. Heading east. and a pack. Someone was smoking here. So, they didn't give a damn about the regulations. Disrupting the ecosystem. No, that's not the point. I understand you want to minimize the effects of our interference here, Doctor, but the mission's safety is at stake. I don't think I have to explain to you the dangers of igniting a dusty atmosphere. Preserving the integrity of Regis III's already extinct ecosystem is not a priority in this scenario. Negligible, actually. Security procedures exist for humans. The rule of integrity is for the sake of everything alien to us. We shouldn't place one above the other. What are you saying, Yasna? The mission and the safety of our people have the highest priority. Always. <laughs> Always? Are we really that self-righteous? Of course, Doctor. We must be the most important to ourselves. And they must be the most important to themselves, whoever they will be. In the end, the strongest will survive. Isn't that how evolution works? Not in a biological sense, Astrogator. Besides, I'm not convinced if we should interfere with everything alien to us just because we can. Doctor, interference is at the heart of human nature. Man would still be a monkey if he'd only looked at trees instead of cutting them down. Yes, we have a nasty nature. I can't argue with that. Can you please confirm that I'm on the correct route? Yes, I confirm. This way will reach the camp within an hour. It looks like some spiky metal growth. Artificial plants? Is spontaneous growth possible with this type of structure? Oh, I've never seen anything like this. I wish I had time to run some tests. When the situation is stabilized, we will take samples. I promise.
status? Nothing's changed, Astrogator. Understood. Are you there? Over. I guess that's a no. Breathe! What's going on, sir? Astrogator? Dr. Yasna. I tried to resuscitate him, but... No, please. Koval? Dr. Krause. How? There was nothing wrong with him. Hyperbolic shock. He bled out during the flight. I still don't understand. He wasn't hurt. His injuries must have occurred later. I found him like this when I entered Hopper. You said I didn't have to worry. I did. It was on my orders that you left the camp and then didn't come back for the doctor. I'm aware that I'm fully responsible for his death. I confirm Gorski was here. His rope is still hanging from the slope. That's a good sign. Since he left it, he intends to come back this way. Huh. Why hasn't he yet? I'm going down after him. Tell me one thing, sir. What did you do with Carter's body? Are you going to use a grave tapper? on the rope, away from the wall. There's still a fair few meters left to the ground. Can you go back? Using just my hands, strapped with all this extra weight. No, not a chance. What if you sway? <sighs> no good. I can't reach anything. Uh. Any other ideas? I can just jump off. Is that safe? A substantial fall on unsteady ground. This is hardly a maneuver that I would describe as safe. So let's take a moment to analyze the situation. I'm thinking if Gorski went down this way and didn't break anything. Yeah, we don't do that, Yasna. He could keep going even with injuries. <sighs> All right, so do you have another idea? Oh, will I be hanging like this until the end of time itself? There is a certain possibility, or rather uncertain, but maybe it's worth trying. I'm listening. Can you see the probe? Yes. It's flying near me. Good. If I instructed it to fly as close as possible to you, you could grab onto it. Are you sure it will hold me? That I cannot guarantee. All right. 
Let's give it a try. I'm entering the instruction. You must guide me. Two meters forward. Stop, that's enough. You have a really good eye. Exactly two meters. You could say so. I fell from a lower height. It was a soft landing, though. with Regis a few minutes after noon. Even then, Dr. Gorski was walking alone. Communications blew up shortly before he got here. He didn't take a tent. Damn. This place is amazing. It's all made up of these structures. Except they don't look like creations of nature anymore. If we're looking for something on this planet, this could be it. These structures form entire multi-story complexes. They look like a city. No, no. There's no point in jumping to conclusions yet. Dr. Gorski set up the flags. You'd have to see it with your own eyes, sir. This place. Gorski may have lost himself in his discovery. I think he might have gotten lost in these structures. They're like a maze. I'm working on it. Are you receiving a signal? From Dr. Gorski. He tried to open up a connection, set up a transmitter. Left or right? <sighs> I can't even see the bottom. The structures go that deep. Yes. I dread to think. What if Dr. Gorski fell down there? If I remember correctly, there is a risk of methane poisoning. That's right. According to Dr. Crowe's a negative symptoms can appear after a maybe after a few hours. I think we'll find good support. Let's hope so. These constructions don't have a clear division into functions. They're huge, complicated, and uniform at the same time. If metamorphism and other natural factors are to be excluded, 
There is only one conclusion. Someone or something must have put them here. Oh, I do. I suspect the surface of Regis Three was once inhabited. Um, I can't tell if any of this could be part of a machine. Really wish we found Gorski already. I look, there's metal. Oh. Ah, I see the probe. Has it found anything? It's not making any measurements at the moment. Oh, why? The overload protection is activated. Until I do a reset, it's on manual control. Mm. Oh, is it because of my flight? It's possible, but please don't worry about it. What matters is that you're fine. Wouldn't it be better if I helped you? I can close it manually, after all. I'd need some directions first. I to bring it to you. No problem. I'm on it. First, let's find a place where I can land it. Otherwise, you won't be able to help me, Doctor. It's a bit like Pando. A, a colony of populous tremoloids. American Aspen. The new trees grow not from seeds, but from root suckers of old trees. As a result, it's one giant organism, thousands of years old. So you're in a dead metal forest? Huh, that does sound bizarre. Though maybe. Doctor, something has been recorded after all. But there are plenty of errors in the transmission header. It's hard to say whether this is a message from Gorski. Well, then, sir, play it. Maybe we'll finally find out what's going on with the doctor. Let's hope so. Gorski to base. I repeat, this is Gorski. Base, come in. No doubt, it's him. Now let's keep listening. But as soon as you report anything, Doctor, I'll stop the recording. Fucker. No confirmation again. I report. I've made an amazing discovery. Geometric structures that a thicket of bushy, pointed rods and slats. Mostly iron, but not only. Molybdenum, carbon, tungsten. Altogether similar to a giant integrated circuit. A million swarm of tangled cables. Not a trace of electric current, polarity, not even residual magnetism. Maybe once upon a time, centuries ago, petawatts or exawatts of power flowed this way. You know, to compare with something, it's, it's probably a machine. Some kind of information, collective structure. Maybe with some kind of electronic brain. It makes me think of the Lyrans. A race of extinct sentient beings. Supposedly, they knew about light astrogation before we invented the wheel. They had to save themselves from the explosion of Nova. They sent ships. The remains of the remains of those ships have been found, ash to a chip, glued together. I've seen hypothetical schematics. The structures here remind me of those. Okay, moving on. Readings. <sighs> well, that's it. What follows is just a humming noise. Any thoughts, Doctor? Oh, so far, it all leads to one conclusion. This is not a place for a man. Nor for any humanoids. Then, who is it for? 
Maybe it's really an alien technology. Those Lyrans. Uh, as far as I know, all information about the Lyran civilization is just guesswork. Many consider Lyrans to be just a myth, so I wouldn't take it too seriously. Well, I think there might be something to it. By the way, you were right, Doctor. Gorski did lose himself in his discovery, in spite of everything. Traces, this time handprints, and a drop detector. What did I hear you right? Yes, sir, you heard correctly. I'm afraid we must be ready for any eventuality. Yeah, well, that doesn't mean we should assume the worst. I still believe you'll find him, Doctor. Well, nothing, really. At least not in the last five seconds, sir. Right. Ah! Ouch! Yes, now, what is it? I took a shortcut. On purpose? Uh, not really. Everything's all right? Yes, yes. I just need a moment to think. Uh, as soon as you find something... I'll report it. No worries, sir. Finally! I have his position. Official? Uh, not yet. Are you here? It's me, Yasna. 
still nothing. Yeah. His backpack. You know what that means, sir. Yes, he was out oxygen. We must hurry. Almost there. Uh, got him. Uh, he's not moving. He seems unconscious. Gorski! Come on! Calm down, Doctor. Get him out of there. The probe's already looking for a landing site. his SOS. You should pick up a transmission with his parameters, sir. Well? No, nothing. The transmitter in the suit must be too weak. Should I retrieve his booster from the backpack? No, no point. Better to set up a relay. We have to do it anyway so that Hopper can land in this maze. Have a preliminary scan of your surroundings. There's an open area nearby. You have to move Gorski there. The bridge will guide you. Okay, I'll carry him. It's just... His parameters don't look too good. That's why I'm sorry, Doctor. Sort of. Yes. Once you set up the transmitter, I should start receiving Gorski's signal. I 
That's your guitar. Hey, I, I, I'm underground. It's hard to determine my exact location. Novik, do you copy? Base, come in. I'm sending an SOS. Anyone, please. Okay. Stay calm. Just keep it together. Heartbeats racing. of water, probably unsafe for consumption. I'd rather not risk it. Meteoric waters. <clears throat> no. Too deep. Oh, shit. Otherwise, I'll never reach the surface. Visibility. Considering all factors, situation hopeless. At least I got flat. Oh, come on. <sighs> Gotta be kidding me. The radio is still receiving. Uh, oh, there's hope. I can't be too far underground. I need to act fast. I hear you. But you don't. Apparently. I think I prefer it the other way round. Okay. Okay. I'm coming to you, Astrogator.
Astrogator. Astrogator? <sighs> Still nothing. I used to find all the reporting annoying. But the silence is even worse. Dark thoughts creep in. Dr. Gorski may already be dead. Something attacked me. And it could have got to him, too. I hope you're monitoring his vitals, Astrogator. And we'll come back for him. Unless I die here. against time, Yasna. We're fighting for our lives. Enough of this nonsense. I can't keep fighting. I'm going crazy with this radio. It works. It doesn't work. It works a little. You know, I did what I could, but it still wasn't enough. I have the right to finally give up. No, not yet. I will not give up. I'll just take a breather. Two days, 48 hours. Huh? What? It's not like the way before I have to fly away. I could also break all the rules. Procedural. We've cobbled to set up the one life above the other. The most likely to condemn us all. Nevertheless, I'm inclined to do so. <sighs> of course, you wouldn't let me die in peace. <clears throat> I can handle. <sighs> I will not give up. <sighs> I did it. I did it, Astrogator. Too bad you can't hear me. Historic reptile and coal deposits, I assume. Oh, finally, we have proof. <laughs> there was life on the surface of Regis III millions of years ago. But for some reason, now there's nothing. Not even bacteria or, or viruses. I'm starting to suspect that someone or something forces life into the water. Perhaps preventing it from moving ashore. If so, I think it's still happening today. The question is, 
Have I encountered this thing already? You never seem to get tired, Novik. Even more fossils. And without comms, no one will even know about this discovery if I'm stuck here. Unless HQ sends another expedition. Then they will find those bones along with mine. Waiting out there for me. Something that caused my fall. No. Don't hesitate. I will die if I stay here. A way out. Astrogator. I'm close. Over. Finally! Yes, sir. You can't even imagine. It's really good to hear your voice again, Doctor. Sir, I've heard you all the way. Yes, sir. Are you saying what? Uh, I don't quite understand myself. Oh, no. 
Since I found the probe, I haven't been alone. No, I'm sorry, Yasna. Maybe it can still be rebuilt. Anyway, you're not entirely alone. I feel like I've, I've lost another companion. My last one. You still have me. Not down here. Probe. It... it distracted the Antimat. You say that as if it did it on purpose. to explain it. Coincidence? I don't believe in such coincidences, Astrogator. Okay. Hit call down. Are you talking about the probe call? <sighs> well, they say in order to win over a person, you have to steal their heart. But the key is to get their brain. You know that's just a metaphor. Anatomically incorrect and highly overused, yes. Okay. Time to get out of here. Oh, not good. You simply don't get a break. What is that this time? Stormfront is approaching your location. Now of all times. I know, Doctor. But please muster up a little more strength. Let's not forget that the Alliance is in the city. Wait a minute. Do you have any specific expectations of me? Since I'm nearby their troops. It's hardcore specific. We need to learn more. You're missing the most important thing, sir. We still have to save Gorski. I don't know what your silence means. Uh, I was going to tell you later. I'm really sorry. What? His readings. No. You don't have to finish. I understand. You did what you could. No. I did what I thought was right. Come on, Doctor. He didn't die due to lack of oxygen. He bled out, like me from the floor. Enough! I've heard enough! By the way, how long have we been out? The longest 20 minutes of my life. Give or take. I heard you some of the time. This time we were cut off the other way. In one place in particular, I, I had a pretty clear transmission. I'm listening. Yeah. Uh, um, you said... Oh, damn it. The storm's getting worse. Ah, uh, that moment. So, I heard right. Yes, but the rules have little to do with it, Yasna. It, it's rather common sense. I would definitely send Arty for you. But would I go alone? I don't know. I hate to admit it, but in my current condition, I would be more of a burden than a help on the ground.
the engine started. Then what are you waiting for? Leave this cursed place. Are you driving? I'm going. Please talk to me. Maybe that will calm me down. Oh, shit! It hit the bonnet! Don't worry. Even if it hits the rover directly, you'll come out and escape. Yeah, the vehicle is, is kind of a Faraday cage. The, the energy will flow through the body, discharge it from the ground. Everything will be fine. You'll see. I remember a mission on EV-5. At that time, I was still a coordinator. But the crew was quite similar. Chemist, cyberneticist, a doctor, an engineer, and a physicist. Simple reconnaissance mission. But there was a miscalculation, and we crashed the rocket. Then we put it back together. <laughs> For whatever was on hand, clone machine, a true Frankenstein monster such as we found. But even more terrifying were the creatures we found on the surface of Eden. Oh, wait. Creatures? You are making this up, aren't you, sir? Not at all. I was indeed on a mission to you. However, uh, I might have exaggerated a bit. That's not it. I left the structures behind. It's an ordinary rock formation. Even better. We have to catch a breath eventually. Come out for one thing. Could you find the model number of the rover? Uh, what for? I've got an idea, but it depends on the model. Uh, I'm at 2001. Could that be it? Uh, let me see. Bigger. Emmets are equipped with a black box. Please find it. I have the box, but it's all locked up. Really? Uh, must have changed the equipment because I have no information about the key. Where did you even get a catalogue of their gear from, sir? And anyway, it doesn't matter. What should I do? One second. I need to think. Don't know if this can help. But the Alliance labels black boxes as data loggers. You will have cable access. Look for something resembling a socket in that plug. I think I have something like that. Then you can connect to the probe's brain there. And press it. That won't work. These inputs are not compatible with Commonwealth plugs. From the outside, our equipment is different, but inside, we have the same guts, so to speak. The cable on the back of the box should already fit. Uh, same guts, eh? Just like with humans.
Okay, it's in. Just a moment. Well done, Doctor. I'm receiving a signal. So, what now? You can find and rest. But only a while to get through all the records. Rover was connected to a base. And the kind of base we're talking about. Mentioned in the registers. An orbital unit. Looks more like a ground base to me. What? When did they set it up? Good question. No one is transmitting from the base. On the other channels, all I hear is static. The storm must be causing interference. I suggest you lie down. The storm's raging. Best to sleep through the night. It may not be that simple. I'm too tired to sleep. Yeah, I know that paradox all too well. Can I help you somehow? Maybe I'll fall asleep if we talk. Naturally. Do you have anything specific in mind? Well, I'd love to know some official secrets about the Alliance base. The reason they're interested in this desiccated, bizarre planet that is Regis Three. Are you implying that I should know these secrets? Yes. I think you're hiding something from me, sir. And at this stage of the mission, I lack both the strength and the inclination to beat around the bush. In that case, let me reveal something I should never say as a commander. I have no idea what's going on on this desiccated, fossilized day. I don't know where the Alliance forces came from, why they came, or what they're doing here. Since we lost contact with the camera, I'm the fact that I am deep in the dark. Yeah, me too. Quite literally. So I suggest we talk about something else, instead of getting ahead of ourselves. A more light-hearted subject, perhaps. May I ask why you became an astronaut? There are two answers to this question. An honest one, and a personal lie. To give you the clearest picture of the truth, I'd have to tell you both. I'm all ears. As cadets, we participated in a series of meetings. HQ organized them to encourage potential recruits. We all said the same thing, just a little different. We all wanted to push the boundaries of human potential, discover what is undiscovered. And then when Charlie members when he first heard about the brave forces of the Commonwealth, sometimes these speeches were already being prepared during the training. You understand what I mean? Every astronaut wished to explore space. They had to wish that. But my reason, an honest reason, not a nice sounding memory that never happened. And I've never been able to find my place. So I came to the conclusion that I would not find it anywhere except out here, in space. Although I never dreamed of exploring. Such lofty ideas as expanding human limits were of little interest to me. It was among my crew that I Not good. Oh, wait. Astrogator, can you explain to me what I'm hearing right now? This is a recording from the rover. The Alliance has apparently broken the encryption of our radio channel. Oh, bollocks. So, so what do we do? We need to change the frequency and the encryption key. What's the point? As soon as you give me a new channel, they will overhear us and change it as well. Just look at the probe's brain. Luna? What's with... All you have to do is watch it closely. I'm switching now, waiting for you to join. Oh, I see. The new frequency is... Okay, the channel is active. Now the encryption key. 
The first three digits of the cipher are... I'm here. Well done. That should buy us some time. So, how should we continue? Uh, don't you need more time to rest? I do. But there's no way I'm going to sleep now. Besides, nothing's stopping me anymore. The storm has subsided. All right. And let's not risk evacuating directly from the city. It should be safer outside its perimeter. I took the liberty of looking through the photos of the nearby area. Everything north and east of your location looks relatively safe. All you have to do is move away from this cluster of metal. So? Should I go back to the ship? That's an odd question. Of course you should come back. Now even more than ever. I'm very concerned for your safety, Doctor. Uh, no need to be. I'm fine. Astrogator, I think I've gone far enough. There is a vast open area. The city is no longer visible. We need to decide what to do next. Dragonfly, over. Are you there? Yes, yes, please excuse me. I was in the infirmary. Is the coast clear? Yep, all clear. Good. Give me a moment. I'm looking at the satellite images. Hm. Have you checked on Koval by any chance? Yes, among other things. And? How is he? He's stable. But? There are no buts, Doctor. You'll see him soon. All right, I've got it. Sector AZ-25... Let's say AZ-2504. Please check if it's fit to land. It looks good. Clear opening, flat terrain. Excellent. Please go there while I prepare the lander. I'll just pack Artie inside. So that's it. You're taking me to the Dragonfly. We're flying away from here for good. We have no other choice, Doctor. At this stage of the mission, we can only minimize losses. You understand that, don't you? Yes, sir. I wasn't keen on this mission from the start. We were supposed to return a long time ago. And that's what I want. I want all of us to return home, dead or alive. Please remember, we have just one lander left. As a commander, I must first ensure your safe return. Only then I'll send Artie with other tasks. Tried to convince me otherwise. I'll just turn the radio off. Fine. I'll stop insisting. Please just understand the position you put me in. As a commander, 
Now I have to decide whether to risk detection by the Alliance. Because by putting yourself in their hands, you're risking not only your own life, but also the rest of the crews. I totally understand. Can't you wait a few more hours? I still need your support, sir. And I still want to be here to help you. Please don't turn off your radio. I'm not going anywhere. Is in front of me. Yes, sir, I'm not kidding. If you don't stop, I'll do it for you. Wow. What the? How did you do that? Yes, sir. I respected your decision not to come back. For while I disapprove of it as a commander, I agree with your conscience. But I won't allow you to kill yourself in foolish haste. I turn the rover's engine off remotely, and I'm not turning it on until you've concluded your reconnaissance. Understood? Did you understand? Yeah. After all, you said yourself that you would be cautious. Why the sudden change of mind? I... I don't know. I guess I'm more nervous about this meeting than I'd like to admit. It's a field base. Multi-module. For about several dozen people. Rather well equipped. They have a second antimat. As if the first one wasn't enough. Is it active? Uh, probably not, but... Proton alone knows. Huh. There's lots of transporters here. I'm not surprised. Missions with a large crew, transport modules were an integral part of the field camp. Remind me, how many crew members were they supposed to send on the Invincible? Over a hundred. Great. What about people? Can you see anyone? Not yet. Maybe they're hiding in modules. Most of them for sure, but I'd be surprised if they didn't assign anyone to guard duty. I see someone. Just one? For now, yes. Is that all? I think so. Then please keep going. You can assume that their equipment has already detected your presence. Or it will soon enough. There's no point in further postponing the inevitable. Still, I'm glad that I stopped. I feel better knowing that there's no heavily armed military waiting for me there. Me too, Doctor. Me too. The 
most likely lose contact soon. So let me be clear. Your situation is highly precarious. We cannot trust the Alliance or expect them to be willing to help. If things don't go our way, I'll do everything in my power to negotiate your safe return to the Commonwealth. Worst case scenario, we'll opt for a prisoner exchange. Until then, please cooperate with them. And during the interrogation, don't resist. Astrobiologists generally do not possess information that's sensitive to the Commonwealth. At worst, you'll give away the details of our last mission. Of course, it'd be better if that didn't happen. Astrogator, I believe in the face of a common threat, we'll find a common language. And we can simply cooperate, pushing political animosities aside. I hope you're right, Doctor. But even if we disregard decades of mutual enmity, we must keep in mind human nature. Homo homini lupus. Just because you want to talk to them doesn't mean they'll listen. I'd rather expect they'll be asking the questions and you'll be answering them. Since we have no idea what's going to happen, I want you to know that you were always a fair commander, even if you were quite strict. I guess what I'm trying to say is... Please, stop, Doctor. And tell me when you get back, in person. Understood? Yes, sir. on so much sometimes i think you're gonna take off without me sir <laughs> don't count on it doctor i'm not going anywhere how odd what there's no one here nobody impossible even if there aren't many of them in the camp someone would have noticed you i'm not blind sir really no one here. Don't get out yet. I'm going. What have I got to lose anyway? Your life, Doctor. going in. Thank you. 
I'm at the central module. In the headquarters. You walked in. Just like that. Yeah. The doors were open. Unbelievable. Just unbelievable. There's one more floor. Not so fast, Jasper. Please check the ground level first. Only then move on to the next one. I have a record of their mission. Each step, location, units, including dates. I'm all ears. Day Zero, landing place. Their main ships in sector AQ-28. The principal? What? They didn't move it? Huh. Seems so. I'll try to track it down. Please tell me what else is in there. Well, like us, they became interested in the ocean. They got there on the seventh day. Hmm. Quite late. I guess they weren't in a hurry. Before setting up this base, they were stationed not far from here. But seemed very determined to reach this area. They dug a vast system of tunnels. When did they finally get here? On the 15th day of the mission. On the 24th day, that they sent a convoy north to the sector. Oh! To the sector where I found Gorski. Do you suspect they went after him, having detected his signal? Oh, surely they could detect him. They... they could have detected all of us. But would they really do something about it? Well, for some reason they left their base. I'm assuming that has something to do with it. Astrogator, this doesn't make any sense. You can't just wrap up the whole operation. Anyway, the first thing they would take were vehicles and equipment. Only the people are missing here. In the end, they sent a convoy to a neighboring sector. So, that was their last move? Well, there's no information about their return. Maybe I'll find them there. Highly probable. Do you know what the current day of their mission is? They left on the 25th day. That's all I know. Well, I can't back out now. I have to follow them. Well, it's your decision. Although I admit I'm also starting to wonder what you'll find. People, Astrogator, they must be somewhere. I'm sending a satellite. Soon I'll have an image of the area where the ship landed. We'll see if the Invincible's still there. I'll continue to search their base. They conducted research and during excavations found... Oh, you won't guess. Metal structures. So we had no chance to outrun them. Yeah. And they were already at an advanced stage of works when we were still in orbit. a device for intercepting alarm signals. There isn't much of it. Single record. Poor guy. He's dead. Awaited help for over a day. Critically low blood saturation. He died of hypoxia. At the time of his death, he was... Biasna, is it necessary? This information will no longer so help anyone. City. One, eight, five, six, one... Seven, five, four. Yes, it's Gorski. I'm sorry. You... You lied to me. You lied how he died. I knew you would blame yourself. Well, of course I do! I could have saved him. Left him the fucking tank. Why didn't you let me? I made the right decision, Yasna. Given the circumstances and our knowledge at the time, there was a high risk your sacrifice would kill you both. Fuck. We let him die. No, Yasna. As I said, I made the call, not you. It would be easier to think so. But I can't. 
can't. One more thing. I realize we still need to work together. So, I'll submit my reports as usual. But that doesn't mean everything's fine. Understood, Doctor. I appreciate your professionalism. Several units can be controlled from here. I wonder which... Ah, oh, damn. One's unavailable. Probably out of reach, or they took it. down. I open the passage. We can follow the convoy route now. When you're ready, Doctor. One more minute, and our satellite will be over the ship. Oh, we're lucky. Clouds are low. Heavy. Give yourself a moment to rest, Doctor. You certainly deserve it. to the convoy.
seems to be slipping through my fingers like sand. So much sand. You felt tired, yes, now. Because I am tired, Astrogator. I've driven into a side location. They were very active here, too. So one of the robots moved away from the perimeter. It stands all by itself, on a distant hill. It's active, I guess. Doesn't it know how to get back? Do you think it's worth investigating? I, I guess everything's worth investigating now. Broadcasting a message. One of their people is in trouble. Sounds suspicious. Did they go away and leave someone behind? Doesn't add up. Robot, do you understand me? He's not responding. The robots are called Arctans. Ah. Arctan. I'm giving you instructions. Oh. Seems to have a different activation command than ours. Arctan, do you copy? I confirm. Over. Oh, you can talk to them after all. Arctan, lead to the human in danger. Robot moved. I'm at the spot. I found his journal. Anything of importance in there? Hmm, let's find out.
some personal notes. Nothing useful to us. Astrogator, we can't help this man anymore. He died a long time ago. Surprisingly long. Traversing this planet, I'm becoming more and more convinced that what I know is not the same as what exists. What can exist? Uh, I must admit, it's an interesting thought, and quite disturbing. feeling we're in the dark. We have to find a way. Agreed. You should move on. Uh, that's not quite what I meant. But yeah, I probably should. beautiful view. An hour seems like a minute, but a minute on a hot stove will seem longer than an hour. Does Regis 3 feel like a hot stove? Sometimes. I found a flying saucer. It landed near the excavation site. Don't risk trying to fly it, Yasna. Nothing guarantees it works. I didn't even... <sighs> Contrary to what you believe, sir, I don't have a death wish.
I heard that the difference between past, present, and future... Well, I've got to the place where they were digging. It's hard to miss. They set up a huge machine at the center. It must weigh hundreds of, no, thousands of tons. The ship that brought all of this must be... Gigantic, yes. The Invincible surpasses any of our units, even the largest orbital stations. In my opinion, it's a bit excessive. Oh, well, for me, it's quite impressive. That was exactly their goal, to impress. Such giants aren't very practical, though. I would even say that the larger the ship, the bigger the problems. Interesting. They found a sizable object deep underground. It stands out from the rest. It's not a part of the structures, but rather an independent, autonomous machine. Also metal? Yes. So, a robot? Or something else that finally looks familiar? Well, it looks a lot more like a robot than the other structures. The excavator has a massive work area. They had photos of the site in the database, taken before they started digging. It's unrecognizable. Inside, there's a structure. Yes, a metal one. Similar to the ones on the surface. But these are completely hidden underground. There's also a couple of smaller cranes here. In comparison to the Colossus, they look like it's pups. Yes, I got it. They have big machines. Bigger than ours. I've already covered most of the convoy route. I'm entering a more enclosed area. A ravine, to be precise. I see. Can I count on a tactical report? Of course. A simple analysis of the situation won't hurt anyone. Hmm. That's for sure. The road ahead leads straight to where the convoy was heading. Well then, what are you waiting for? Any doubts? No. No. I don't. I still think we have to go there. If they're not in the base, they must be somewhere, damn it. So, what's on your mind? I can just drive in there. Straight to the convoy. Or try and take a side path to remain unnoticed until the very last moment. Bold assumption. 
could be an unnecessary detour. I leave that to your judgment, though. It's your call, Jasper. Uh, actually, I don't think it will make much difference. I'm heading straight to the convoy. Nearing the destination. From now on, I'll be on foot. Good. It's better to approach with caution. Uh, actually, I don't have a choice. The road is blocked. Seems like a sidewall collapse. The radiation level is rising rapidly. Yasna, be careful. Of radiation. Of other people. Just. One of their vehicles watch got stuck in the rubble. Oh? So you've already reached the convoy? It's only this vehicle so far. I'm looking for the rest. There's another mobile antimatter cannon. Another one? How many of those did they... Is it active? Dead, fortunately. Uh, I admire your composure. <sighs> well, I've had my fair share of anxiety lately. No wonder my brain's in defense mode now. Dissociation is something we all do. Hang on, someone's here. Oh no. Astro 
Traitor. They're dead. So you found someone. <clears throat> I didn't let that thought get to me. Didn't want to. Finding them was my priority. It could have been just another abandoned place. Not this. What exactly happened to them? Well, that's a good question. I'm not even sure what they were doing here. Oh, another hole. Great. I'm not sure if it's safe to go in there. Last time it turned out to be quite hazardous. True. Maybe take a look around first. I'm getting into the Antimats recorder. What do we have here? They were preparing for departure. with the giant cranes right before they lifted that strange artifact above ground level they're getting close to where i am now it's hard for them to reach the site that's why they're trying to get there from above Tunneling their way through with a beam of antimatter. How subtle. Can you locate the breach? Looks like they found whatever they were looking for in that ominous tunnel. Of course. Don't jump to conclusions, Doctor. Not before you finish. You need to know what to expect there first. containers ended up in one of the transporters. I wonder if it's still nearby. Oh, shame. The transport's leaving. Something's going on. One man's trying to draw the attention of the others to... I have no idea what's beyond the frame. The photo is such poor quality. You can see the fear in his face. One of them is staring with concern at an instrument. Some sort of meter. Next slide. People rushing out of the tunnel, running from whatever's in there. They're probably still considering whether you should go inside. I admit it's all very intriguing, but also too risky. What I'm trying to say is. I fear for your safety, Asta. Spare me your concern, sir. I'm not a child. Be fine. One of the antimats has fired straight into the tunnel. And? What happened next? There's nothing else. Only. Darkness. Can't you see what it was aiming for? Total panic. 
Everyone's trying to escape. There's also a second anti -med. It's shooting into the air. Unbelievable. Boats were floating. Antimat's new objective is to eliminate, instead of protecting. What happens next? The second Antimat. That's what destroyed it. People are frozen with fear. They don't know what to do. It's firing directly at the crew. Shooting them, one by one. It's horrifying what an antimatter being does to the human body. Uh, I'm sorry you have to see this, Yasna. Regis Three doesn't spare you. Who needs such destructive power? This technology puts us on a straight path to annihilation. Well, the Alliance will do anything to feel invincible. Hence their flagships. It's not only them, Astrogator. If I remember correctly, we're not engaged in open conflict. And yet, we too participate in this ridiculous arms race. To the death and beyond. Someone hid behind a rock. How do you know? This antimat has thermal imagery. Hiding from it made no difference. One man has raised his hands in surrender. If only a machine could take pity on him. With a proper programming, it could recognize such gestures, but it could never feel compassion. No. It, it killed him. The machine just killed him. Oh, fuck. Yes, no? The last photo is from a few moments ago. I'm on it. Bloody hell, so it's not dead after all. The machine that massacred the Alliance is still operational, and it could target you at any moment. Let's hope not. Perhaps it's best to hope, while moving away. If that's all... What about that tunnel? Oh, right. I'm not hearing you object, sir. Go ahead, Yasna. I know you'll do it anyway. <clears throat> I can hear a rhythmic, metallic sound coming from beyond the tunnel. Understand you, sir. The audio is breaking up. I'll get back to you once I reach the end. It's an arc tank coming at me. Ah, carrying something. I got out. Well, inside a cave. Yeah, can you hear me? Over. Copy that. Ah, I don't feel too. My head feels like it's bursting from pressure. Breathe, Yasta. You need to rest. No. No. I'm better now. All right. Can you tell me what's in there? Seems like this robot started a task and then got stuck in a loop. What task? Boxes. It took one, but never left. Why do you think it's stuck? Well, it goes in circles, using the same path. <sighs> this place is full of metal. 
or bushes. Same as the ones before. Well, the lower parts of the bushes are, how to put it, fruitless. <laughs> so the Alliance came to pick the fruits. I think their crew took some soil samples. There's this chip rock, revealing what lies beneath the surface. Which is more metal? Yes, a metal interior. Roots are exposed as well. They're not embedded in any rock, but in a tissue-like alloy. Yeah, that's one way of putting it. So, all the bushes in this area, and there are plenty of them as I understand, appear to grow on the rock, but deep down their roots are embedded in metal. Perhaps you should take a closer look at them, Doctor. Can you please check them, Yasna? Do you have anything specific in mind? Doctor. If it's all metal... Then I'll use a detector. Right. I'm checking. Give me a sec. Perfect. Everything matches. There's metal all around. And the bushes have a direct connection with the whole system. Mm, interesting. So similar. To the structures I saw following Gorski? Yes. Huh. Well, perhaps it's... Looks like two generations. One, old, dead, a relic. Second, these bushes all grew in the remains of the former generation. Hang on. Are you saying that this new generation is alive? And the old one used to be alive? We can't rule it out. And you say that as a biologist? I haven't heard you mention cells, membranes, organs, or green bodies. Which leads me to one conclusion. That thing. Is not alive, Doctor. Uh, well, we're used to calling all life protonaceous, especially ourselves. But that's on us. The universe doesn't give a damn about our classifications. Yes, ma'am. Are you abandoning your profession? What you have learned, discovered, researched so far? I'm just opening up to the unknown. I'm pretty sure the box is filled with research material. Those fruits. Hmm. Could you retrieve them somehow? It won't be easy to snatch a crate from its steel grip. I'll come closer first.
Magnus Loop. I didn't. Well, he must have done something. Never mind. We'll try to locate it. But first of all, get out of there now. Ah, huh, I found the robot. It hasn't gone far. Just please follow it. Decided not to shoot me after all. Please continue, sir. <clears throat> I'm all is. You will agree that we were doing very well. Outstanding results. That's how it ought to end. Well. Yes, I fully agree, but then it seemed this could have been the crowning achievement of the entire expedition. Just imagine. You could have at least asked us. I did wrong. I know that now. I will never forgive myself for it. Neither do I expect you to. Oh, to hell with it. I can't really blame you. After all, you're the commander. It's your job to make decisions like that. And live with the consequences. Right. It means a lot to hear that from you, Yasna. Thank you. So, what do we do now? Will you finally let me send Hopper for you? I... I can't just fly away. Now more than ever. I won't rest until I find out what happened to our people. And what we can do to aid them. Now you can forget about the research material. The only thing left of the Arctan is its feet. Considering all the factors, I would assume everyone in the convoy is dead. If there's anything more to learn, it's from the recording devices. The first antimat told us a lot. The second one is destroyed. You spoke about the probe. It should be a valuable source of information. And the rovers. Are they on the convoy list? Huh. It's cool down. Actually, it's right in front of me.
Why even bother with security measures when they just leave keys in locks anyway? So, let's hear it. Hello, base. This is Antka. Hello, Antka. Tesla here. I can hear you. Reporting. 25th day of the mission, 7.15 a.m. We arrived. Huh. I saw it on the slides. We encountered a terrain obstacle, but it has been removed. You can skip ahead if you would. We've established permanent access to the extraction site, separated the material for research. Now we're securing the first transport. Dr. Boza and Osterhaus have already begun their preliminary research here on site. Gotcha. I'm passing it on. Let us know if there are any updates. Of course. Over and out. Ah, uh, th there's more. Base, come in. Dr. Boza wants to talk with you. Tesla here. Over. We have a sort of discovery. Oh? I'm listening. 25th day. Base, this is Boza. Doctor, these tiny crystals contain highly advanced technology. Individually, they are slender and helpless. However, when in a group, they seem to stimulate and support each other, revealing new properties. At first, they started to emit an electromagnetic field. Okay. Uh, and then? A handful of small crystals gathered together. When in a larger group, they activated and... This is our biggest revelation so far. They started floating in the air. Did I hear that, but The larger the group, the easier, more freely. Yes. Apparently it's flying. Like a swarm of mechanical flies. Slow down, Doctor. You say crystals, or rather flies. Which one is it? Call it whatever you want. These creatures have a precise three-fold symmetry, resembling the letter Y, with three-pointed arms connecting in a central bulge. Black as coal in direct light, shimmering with shades of blue and olive in reflected light. As my colleague Osterhaus mentioned, they somewhat resemble the abdomens of certain terrestrial insects. Is Markovnik there? The navigator's unavailable right now. Well, please let him know we'll submit our reports as soon as he's available. Oh, and have him send us another transporter, will you? Autonomous robots the size of flies. It's not finished. Let's keep listening. Hello, convoy. Anka, come in. Are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. We're finishing loading. Preparing to depart. Don't! Mm, gets tense. Leave the material behind and return to the base. Huh. But why? What happened? Scouts came back from this whole city. Tesla? What's going on? Hello? Tesla, come in. Navigator speaking. Don't take anything. Just get out of there. Immediately. That's an order. Last saved recording. Amazing. Microbots grouping and flying together, similar to flies, capable of affecting other machines. Even to the point that those affected become dangerous to humans. The microbots, they must be dangerous as well. I don't know how, but not all people were killed by larger robots. I think I've figured it out. Partially, at least. The Alliance scientists were very clear that all of this had to do with an electromagnetic field. The field emitted by these flies. When people displayed disturbing symptoms, field measurements showed above average values. Now, at first, I thought it was a sensoric malfunction. After all, the machines were broken. Mm -hmm. It turns out that field damaged them. So all the malfunctions occurred afterward. Why didn't I think of it sooner? Prolonged exposure to strong electromagnetic fields can be harmful to the human brain. Usually it concerns long-term effects, months and years of unfavorable conditions. Please elaborate, Doctor. What sort of effects? various brain dysfunctions. It may even lead to the arrest of vital organs. So that's how... Merit. <sighs> Most probably. Another known effect of the EM field is memory loss. The human organism continues to function normally, but the human being is such as helpless, vulnerable. Like a baby, they don't understand the world around them. Can such a person learn the world anew? I can't be sure. There's no precedence. Even if there is room for development, learning everything all over, they won't... they won't remember anything. Even language. Their past, our voyages together... Let's face it, 
This new life of theirs will be far from normal. They'll be aged children, walking curiosities, oddities, lab rats, all that made them have gone to hell. Perhaps researching those flies will help us to better aid our people. We're theorizing for now. It'd be worth examining. Confirm, at least. Got it, Astrogator. I'll search for those containers of flies. I've located one of the transporters, sir. Please don't celebrate yet, though. Something strange has happened to it. Get to the point, please. What's wrong with it? The outer shell is damaged. There are holes everywhere. Like, from bullets? No. It looks like it's been corroded by strong acid. Cargo Bay has budged a little, but it won't open fully. <clears throat> it's too awkward to squeeze in. And the whole vehicle is just stuffed with bushes. But can you see past them? Not quite yet. I can see broken containers. No sign of the flies. Just plenty of bushes. You have some theory, sir. Everything that comes to my mind seems absurd. You go ahead, sir. As I see it, no idea is too absurd right now. I haven't quite thought it through. Not yet. Maybe after I listen to your assessment. Well, look, I think I might work like this. The bushes and flies have a symbiotic relationship. I even consider that the flies are part of the bushes. Just like the fruits. If the flies can fly, they behave more like insects. And the bushes like plants. I see we're getting back to biological analogies. According to your profession, do I correctly conclude that you are confident that this can be a life form? Given the age of the oldest forms and the evidence of continued activity, differentiation, a particular drive towards miniaturization, improvement, and lethal effectiveness, I dare say that we are dealing with an evolution here, far longer than that of human. Also very different, and dead. Necroevolution. Mortuus evolutionis. I still don't understand where this change is coming from. What if I said that the flies and bushes are the same thing, but in different forms? When they need to move, they develop moving parts, the flies. When they need to multiply, expand their volume, they settle on the metal substrate, form bushes, absorb raw material and they are again ready to transform and relocate to a new source and so on and so forth well i can tell you it's the most sophisticated form of being i've ever heard of with all the skepticism that comes with it Huh. 
There's something I need to do before moving on. second transporter is under a force field. It's hovering above the ground. So it is operational. Probably also in better shape than the other one. Oh, it certainly looks better. The cargo may be intact then. I know how to get inside. Under this field. Will you dig a tunnel? I won't have to. There's already an entrance. Just need to get to it. Astrogator, I found their probe. Looks like it hid from the flies. Or just ended up here by pure luck. Luck indeed. Its registry could be valuable. Especially if it managed to photograph everything from a greater distance. Oh, come here, little probie. Oh, that didn't work. It flew away. Is it scared of you too? I'd rather say that my lack of authorization is more of a problem than me being scary. I won't be able to bring the probe down unless I find a working controller. Oh, I got inside the field. Do you copy, sir? Of course. The force field doesn't block radio waves. I suggest the following. If this transporter is actually running, it doesn't make any sense to take out the containers and carry them with you. You're going to take the whole transport. You'll have the flies in large numbers and a powerful means of transport that can fly over terrain inaccessible to the rover. But before you leave, you need to take down the force field. So first, the Energobot, turning off the force field, then transporter, departure. All clear? Good and clear as the sky is blue. Just waiting for things to go sideways. Is the probe still with you? Yep, it's here. is 
longer a problem. Disable. really help our people, Astrogator. It will, I'm sure. So, what? Off we go? Yasna, what are you wondering about? Uh, yeah, sure. I got lost for a moment there because of the flies. Yeah, you'll have a lot of time to think about it. Now we have to check if you'll be able to leave with this transport. Of course. I'm on it. Although, first... I'd like to see them up close. Very well. Just hurry up. them. Nothing more. Don't worry, sir. What? Some goddamn black hole has opened and distracted us for it. And you say not to worry. Just look outside, Doctor. See for yourself.
to know what might kill us. I, I don't know if I should interrupt your, uh, speech, sir. It is quite interesting to listen to. Yes, sir. <laughs> this is too much. Tell us you how many times already. <laughs> uh, the fourth time, if I counter correctly. But I'm not planning another. No, the first four weren't planned either. At least we learnt the truth about this planet, and the inorganic beings that inhabit it. What good does that do us, though? We know the cause of the stupor. Maybe we can find a way to cure Koval. If anyone from the Alliance survived, and they already started their research into a cure... I wouldn't count on it. It's more likely they're all dead. Not necessarily. It's a large base, and I only found a few bodies. The rest of them must be somewhere. Or you'll find more corpses, Yasna. Hey! Something changed. The balloon over the base disappeared. You mean it flew away, or did it fall to the ground? Oh, I hope it's a latter. If it caught the west wind, it would have fallen in this area. We're lucky. It's hanging from a cliff, close to the ground. Can you get to it? Unhook it. Maybe that won't be necessary. Oh, shit. Somebody's here. If all you're seeing is dots on the tracker... No. I can see them with my own eyes. Two of them, even. Two people, alive. Huh? Where did they go? Have you lost them? Well, I can't see them now. They were here just a second ago. Are you sure? What did they look like? One was wearing an Alliance suit, a green one. The other one, I don't know. He looked different. I see. And now they are nowhere to be found. Damn right. Doctor. I know what I saw. Two people alive. Some of them survived. And you're going to look for them. Yes. I'm glad we understand each other, sir. I suggest focusing on what's certain. That balloon is still there, is it not? If it had operational cameras, we might get some answers. You don't have to convince me, Astrogator. I'm going. The rover is nearby if needed. Good to know. Thank you. How are you feeling? Let me just say this. Literally everything hurts. I don't know where frustration ends and a conduced lung begins. But at least... Yes? I'm alive. You know what, sir? That whole incident at the start of my journey. Yes, I remember. I got badly hurt back then, and I damaged the radio. And you lost your memory. The thing is, it wasn't the real cause. There were bushes there too, remember, sir? Just after the fall, the same black cloud of flies gathered above me. They subjected my brain to an electromagnetic field. 
Yes, now that's what you suspect. I know it. The memory of that event came back to me. So it was the flies all along, in the case of our crew as well. Yes. And that antimat in the tunnels and the whole convoy. It happened to all of them. close to this fallen balloon. <laughs> uh, what's so funny? Uh, oh, nothing, sir. It's just, in my mind, it sounded like... like the title of some Renaissance painting. The Fallen Balloon of Regis. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I found the recorder. The fallen recorder of Regis. <laughs> Please stop. From the top. Let's see. The 25th day of the mission. Morning. The balloon goes up. You can see the immediate surroundings of the base. They're operating at full capacity. The base is active. Ah. I didn't see that from below. They parked several vehicles on top of a nearby hill. Huh. The balloon is moving away from the base. Which direction? Approximately south. It found some water reservoirs. Many of them. Rocks, water, sand. Anything noteworthy? No, not really. No people, units, nor significant changes in the surroundings.
The balloon's completing its loop. It seems quieter at the base. But there's still a few people. And they're grouping up. A dozen people gathered in the square, next to the vehicles. Two vehicles that weren't there before. Oh, they've left. There are no vehicles. There's no one. They must have set off towards their old base. Or to the ship. But why didn't they wait for the convoy to return? Maybe they didn't know the others were in trouble. Doubtful. It was after the clouds attack. Well then, apparently that's how the Alliance treats its people. Lousily, without dignity. The subsequent shots are similar to each other. They show an empty base. There are actually quite a few of these. Oh. It captured the moment I entered the base. And it's empty again. At two o'clock in the afternoon. I was on my way to the convoy by then. So we won't find out anything else. Wait! You're wrong. Someone was in the base. A man! So he's real after all. I knew it! I told you! That you did. Please forgive my doubt. But where is this man now? And can we expect any more? I think he's near the base. Judging by the last slide, the Alliance must have a hideout there. And we need to go back, I guess. of humans is the worst thing that happened in space. Or to space, even. Well, why do you insist on seeking them out? Because I also believe in human goodness. The selfless desire to help others. I can't believe otherwise. All my efforts would be meaningless. I don't know whether to envy you or... To worry even more.
What happened to the convoy? Huh. Uh, the probe is no longer flying. Which probe? The first one. The one that patrolled the base. You didn't mention it, Doctor. So the probe landed... Or someone brought it down. I could have spent countless days in this base... ...and still not discovered their hideout. And it's right above my head. All I needed to do was look up. So this means there's a view of the entire base from up there. I'll confirm when I get there. But I know it's on your mind, sir. I could have been under surveillance ever since I arrived here. Don't turn off your tracker. Maybe it'll give you a slight advantage before meeting them. to climb without safety equipment. This is nowhere to be seen. No alternative route? This way seems to be the only one. We ran out of options here. It's just, if I were you... With all due respect, Astrogator, it is me being stuck on this surface. So if you let me, I'll take my chances. And I will... Oh, I will find the man. Have you... made the climb worth it already? So you're on top. Yes. Activity within radius? I heard no beeps. And I see no dots. Shit! <laughs> How? What? I found him. Very well. Now keep your distance and be careful. It's too late. What? I can't hear you. It's too late to keep... Yasna, what is it? Why is it too late? Yasna, speak to me. He's looking for others. He's... <laughs> you... What have you done? Shit! He found you too. Why? And he's blaming us. What did it gain you? That's not good. It's his planet. I'm trapped here too. Get up. Ah! So much 
much for talking. Yasna, don't provoke him. If you would just listen to me for one moment. I said get up. to be afraid. I, I come in peace. <laughs> Save it. I guarantee you'll have time to talk later. What a... Just keep your mouth shut. For your own good. Okay, stay calm. He's going to lead you to his superiors. Which is good in theory. Unleash such murderous shit. Hey, don't turn around. You're a scientist, just like me. Yes, now what are you doing? You don't shoot at people. Shoot. He has a gun. I'm a technician, <laughs> smartass. Firearms or chemical weapons, what's the difference? Same outcome. Look, I know that people have died, your comrades, but you have to understand. I don't know what you want with us. You will answer to the Astrogator. He will determine whether there's room for understanding. That's right, obviously. It's really not necessary. But if you try anything, I'll do it. I'll shoot you. Yes, ma'am. I don't know what you're trying to do, but he sounds serious. Take it easy, please. I'll handle him. Huh? What are you babbling on about? You have a death wish. Only short answers from now on. I'll ask the questions and you'll answer with a short yes or no if you think it's safe to do so. Or some code. Maybe grunts. Do you understand? Uh-huh. Good, good. Is there anyone else? Uh-uh. Okay, leave it, Yasna. Let's focus on something else. Uh, do you want to tell me something about this man? Something about his appearance, maybe? <sighs> Start, damn it. Uh-huh. Does it concern his outfit? Uh-huh. Which part? Legs? Uh-huh. It's about the legs? No. Uh -uh. <sighs> I must have misheard. Let's try again. Does it concern... When it rains, it pours, huh? Legs? Torso? Uh-huh. It's about his torso? Nuh-uh. -uh. Still no. <sighs> this won't work. This man has something very specific about him, but I'm not going to be able to figure out what. It works. Let's go. Break time's over. I can hear something's happening. Do you think you could ask? Where are you taking me? You came here yourself. So what are you expecting, huh? set up a field base down there. So I didn't expect you to have a second one here. Yes, really? Oh, really? I'm listening. I have no idea what this place is, nor why or, or where you're leading me. Doctor, bite your tongue for once. Somehow I don't expect I'll meet your astrogator here. You're right. It's... Yes, no, I'm listening. The signal is getting weaker. Wherever he's leading you... Won't be able to communicate. Uh-huh. Get in. Go, Yasna. Stay calm. I, I don't want to. Go! Yasna, I'll do everything in my...
Oh. Sit here. And don't you dare move. Spliscus the speleologist sounds pretty damn hilarious. Come on, you must be hungry. Search the caves. I know Dr. Magdoff went down there. If only you could tell me which cave she worked in. Maybe it would be easier then. If only you could. Sebulon has also gone missing without a trace. I don't even know where to look. And the whole convoy crew. I'll go there tomorrow. Maybe by then, with reinforcements. And it went smooth. Rejected so much. Broadcasting. And you, mind your own business. Hello, Bridge. Rohitra speaking. <sighs> Rohitra. Can you hear me? Over. You're still not getting through. This is an urgent announcement. It's the 26th day of the mission, 1300 hours, 42 minutes. I am reporting the presence of Commonwealth units on the surface of the planet. I have arrested one person. It's a woman, unarmed. I haven't noticed any other people or other units nearby, but this person was in active radio contact. I'm requesting backup, over and out. Hey, Milos. Hope you're still in range. Listen, the Commonwealthers are here. I have one of them, uh, a woman. She was talking to someone on the radio, but I didn't see anyone around. I see what you're doing. Uh, I just wanted to sit more comfortably. Yeah, sure. Better get comfortable with discomfort. 
we'll sit around for a while. My name's Yasna. Mm, not that I'm asking. You're Rahitra, right? <clears throat> I work as an astrobiologist. Brother is a spy. Don't eavesdrop on me, Yasna. And don't talk to me. I, I just wanted to ask. Don't ask. <laughs> so what now? Talk to the wall. I'm not prohibiting you from doing that. Yet. Do you have air filters here? <sighs> Did you know there's methane in the atmosphere? I know. These tanks are a temporary solution. Are you shielding yourself from the flies? Uh, from what? Flies. You named them that yourself. I mean, the Alliance did. Mm. Seems to me that the commanding staff will have a lot to talk to you about. Fortunately, I don't have to. I suppose you often go out for supplies. Wait, Condor? Condor what? You. Are you from Condor's crew? Yeah, so? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Here we can agree. You're talking complete nonsense. What do you mean? How come that's such a revelation? The Invincible was supposed to be here soon. Not Condor. Not now. Where did you get this information from? From intelligence. There you go. Will you finally admit what you were up to here? I'm from the Dragonfly, a small research unit. We're looking for planets with rich flora and fauna. That's the only reason we landed here. <laughs> no way. This planet is a complete corpse. According to estimations, it should be teeming with life. With its atmospheric composition and insulation, it should be a veritable paradise. We couldn't have predicted that- Fine, fine. If you don't want to tell me the whole truth, then don't. But do not lie. Intelligence is not interested in flowers and bees. Uh, do you smoke? I would if I hadn't run out. Sorry, but I wasn't lying. We're just scientists who've had awful luck. Huh. Our intelligence, your intelligence. Our orders, your orders. It's all gone to hell, Rahitra. Now we need to focus on the people. I know what's wrong with them. Should I expect them here? Your people? I'm the only one left on the surface. The astrogator stays in the orbiting dragonfly, and there's no contact with the rest. If you lie, you only harm them. Several dozen of our men set off with me lost to Condor. If they find more Commonwealth spies, they may be less sympathetic than I am. I'm telling you this for the last time. I didn't lie. All right, all right. Let's change the subject. When was the last time you had something to drink? The last time? I don't even remember. Thought so. It's water. <laughs> Local, but treated. Go ahead. You must be thirsty after everything you've been through. No thanks. I see. So all in all, we don't trust each other, do we? Do you really know what's wrong with them? I know what caused it, and how. This planet is inhabited by microbots that your scientists have called flies. Millions of microbots. A real cloud. What? A cloud of flies, which can literally erase the human mind. 
wash away all memories. That sounds... Can you prove it somehow? I could, if you released me. Nice try. We'll do as follows. Mark 10 will watch over you, and I'll keep an eye out for Milos. As soon as he returns with help, you will show us this cloud. Mark 10, come to me. Supervisory procedure. One person, a woman. No Alliance ID. Targeted. I confirm. Should I start the surveillance? Yes. Guard our guest. Oh, great. Oh, my neck. Oh, you fell asleep. Finally. Only the robots left. You don't know the concept of weariness, do you? Arctan, check that noise. Attention. Man in danger. It's high time to get out of here. Phew. It worked. Astrogator. I, I escaped. Doctor, what a relief. Where exactly are you? I'm near their hideout. Though I intend to change that as soon as possible. There? Have you met Spluskus and Lendl? Yet. How do you know their names? I've intercepted the Alliance's communications. Keep going. We'll discuss everything on the way. The path along the cliff looks much safer. I think I can get down here. Good. Proceed. Yasna, I have to ask. What happened in the last few hours? <laughs> that man... He didn't hurt you, did he? I talked to Rahitra for quite some time. Then he had an Octan guard me, but its algorithms proved easy to trick. What do you make of this man? What kind of person is he? He wasn't very pleasant to deal with, but that's understandable, given the circumstances. He's lost, angry, scared. It's a shame I failed to win him over. Then we need a new plan. Uh, yeah. It seems so. Although I could use some rest. Oh, it was a rough day. A night. A rough couple of days, actually. Sorry, Doctor, but you'll have to get away from there first. Where to go? There's a hole from an antimatter beam on the other side of the canyon. Very well. Perhaps you can find out where the invincible landed. Oh, I didn't tell you the most important thing. Condor's here on this planet. Condor? Yes. Looks like HQ got it all mixed up. Both the arrival time and the ship itself. What? That's unbelievable. How could the intelligence be so wrong? As soon as we return, I'll break their. Never mind. I think I'll follow Milos. The one who transported remaining survivors. Not to Condor. He was heading there anyway. Maybe I can join his group. If they're still alive. Given the circumstances, that's quite unlikely. I know. But since I managed to find three living people... All right. We'll do as you say, Doctor. I trust your judgment. I need to get down, but I'm not going down this way. 
I'll have to find another route. There's an underground tunnel in front of me. We may cut out for a moment. Understood. a rover. Do you mean Pat, Doctor? Well, well. You've never made jokes like that before, sir. I'm just glad you're fine. And that I'll rob that alliance prick, huh? Maybe. A little. Let's go. We need to get to the end of this insane story. No idea. Rahitra didn't tell me anything about it.
I've driven to the place where they were stationed before they set up the base. Do you want to stop? <sighs> okay. Maybe I'll find something worthwhile. There's several options here. Are they still working? Yes. I wonder for how long. of death is starting to exhaust me more than frighten me which in itself is quite normal doctor you're well aware that these are our survival mechanisms <sighs> yeah i am Organisms. All this so called life is so fragile compared to the lifelessness of machines. So you found more bodies? One. Is it Milos? Not forget about them. As you said yourself, Doctor. Please keep going. That's enough sightseeing for me. If Milos kept going, so should I. Agreed.
There's a problem. I'm listening. The route they took is blocked by a force field. There must be an Energobot somewhere. But I don't know if I can get to it. Maybe you can go around the field. I'll check. Although... It's pretty narrow here. The route is blocked all the way across. Boulders are blocking the way. So even if I turn the force field off... We still can't proceed. Even if I find a way, I'll have to continue without the rover. Uh, wouldn't make much sense. Please keep looking. Not yet. I have to look around here first. Transporter. They're here. He's standing still in front of the force field. Is that Milos convoy? I'll confirm soon, but yes, most likely. There's someone inside. More than one. Two. And they're all in the transporter? Ready yourself for the worst, Doctor. I am ready. Power's off. Moment of truth. Ah, it's on. Get the door open.
Not exactly. The inner door is still locked, and the outer door is just shut. I repeat, now all doors have... Wait! The back door opened. This vehicle. It's a coffin, sir. A mass grave. They were all crammed in here. In the heat and darkness, with no chance of understanding what's going on. Terrible death. I'm sorry you have to see that. The number of registers, 428. Playing in broadcast mode. You found more of those. No. It started automatically. Hello, Condor. This is your interstate. It's day 26, time 805. I'm continuing my search for the missing crew. I've just the excavation area. I've yet to find others. Come here as soon as possible. Bring me back up. I've checked I've the excavation area. Right. Have you noticed? Please help. Come for us. Please. Over and out. I'm not talking about that. Hello, Nicole Condor. It's playing over this and over, I know. It's jammed. I was looking for others, but they were no longer there. Oh, shit. I'll continue my search. We're waiting for your support. Come back, will you? Over and out. So Hello, he's losing Condor. his memory too. This is Rohitra speaking. Just like me. It's day 26, Sounds time much 806. You everything. I've returned his case. from the excavation Memories site. Don't I was looking for others. All these recordings have the same content. We're no longer there. He's been here for I'll far too long. Far too long not to support. receive help from Condor. Come back, will you? Right, Doctor. Over now. Nobody will come. Hello, Condor. I'm afraid there's this not a soul here. This is speaking. On this day 26. Except for the I'm three in the cave. Yes, I have a I'm request. still searching for the I'm missing crew. Let's I'm skip this to the rest of the area. Can I stop them? No way. There was no I'm not going back there. We need help. Come for us. Well, let's change the Please. Time. One more turn down. That I Hello, can do. Condor. Right. Talk to you in this a second. This is real hit for speed. Ah. Much better. Agreed. Astrogator, someone's firing distress flares from near the hideout. Do you think it's Rahitra? Who else could it be? It sounds like you know something, sir. Actually, I don't. Well, he put out a broadcast, but Why didn't then? say a word about you, as if nothing had happened. Astrogator, firstly, please keep me informed of such things. Second, it happens again. He started a new cycle. Please be more clear. He fell asleep and forgot what happened the whole day. And once again, he will wake up on the 26th day of the mission. I almost feel sorry for him. Don't joke about it. If I don't snap him out of this cycle, he'll keep repeating it until he dies. Or goes insane. Of course, I feel the tragedy of this man. You want to rescue him, even though he's still a threat. You don't have to say anything. I'll be there in a minute. Please slow down. Remember, he has a gun. He didn't shoot at you the first time, but if you go in now... He won't this time as well. In, in any case, let's not worry in advance. I haven't located him yet. What about all those machines on the hill? Is there anything there he could use to threaten you? Your reaction to your late-night visit? Well, let's see. Given you're bringing him such devastating news, you might overreact.
can literally erase me from this planet if you wanted to. I know what's at stake. I can handle it. Left to look for. 
All that's left is revenge. Master Gata, I think he wants to fight. I don't think so. He's already opened the field.
on the ship to have survived. Do you? I'm not that naive. I need the Condor itself. In order to... We have the entire arsenal of our flagship at our disposal. We might be losing now, but it doesn't mean we can give up. We'll send the Cyclops out to fight. Cyclops? That's a code name for... It's more of a moniker. For an 80-ton machine with firepower exceeding all antimates combined. We usually use it in conditions of high radiation, contamination, enormous pressures and temperatures. Due to the interference of the force field, it floats several feet above the ground. So it doesn't depend on the surface. In addition to the Dirac's force field, it has an antimatter spherical blaster. And it has the most advanced electronic brain at our disposal. Defeat is not an option. you had enough. It might be time to hide and consider other options. You must be kidding. I'm not gonna sit on my ass in the dark. Now I finally know what happened? I, I see you're not gonna listen to me either. Because there's nothing to talk about. Look, I've given you a simple choice, Yasna. Are you going or not? Go where there could be water, medicine, resources, or stay here to die. Wow. Such a hard choice. I hope I won't regret it. Too bad you didn't mention earlier that you had a working saucer. But we could fly to Condor right away. Or even into orbit. Working is a big word. It's just a tin can with a couple of sputtering engines. Controlling it technically doesn't work. <sighs> Somehow it does not surprise me. Let's fly. Just a minute. I'm waiting for the force field to shut down, which should be soon. I wasn't responding. Yes, he did. He said he'd be back. If he expected me to wait here, he's sorely mistaken. Wow. It's impressive. The Condor? Yes. Uh, it looked majestic in the pictures. In real life, too. I think I know where a hitcher is. It's to be expected that we'll lose communications as soon as you enter the cargo bay. Sure thing. So many tons of steel. Indeed. You'll have to establish a connection using one of the devices on the ship. I'm sure you'll find one in the command bridge. I'll find that radio. No worries. So that's their marvel of military technology. Rich will waste no time. Is it attacking already? For now, he's only released the Cyclops, as they call it. The heck does he think? <laughs> it's floating majestically, three meters above the ground. Ah, what does it look like? Must admit that I haven't seen any pictures of the Cyclops. The Alliance tried to keep its existence a secret, so there are a lot of unsubstantiated legends about it. It's big. Bigger than a transporter. Its launches are hidden for now. But for some reason, it gives off such an unsettling impression. Does it make any sounds? Uh, no. It's big and quiet. Uh, well... If only we could get hold of its blueprints. This is hardly the time, Astrogator. It, yes, it's another time. It suppresses warlike tendencies. Without spirit. Without glory. Glory? 
I'm thinking out loud. This cruiser of theirs seems so powerful. Worthy of the mightiest space conquerors. Yet on this planet, all that awaited its crew was death. Not glory. There's one more thing, Yasta. This is important. I'll be able to confirm it in a while, but so far everything indicates... What is that, Astrogator? Headquarters were right about the Invincible. It's actually flying here. If I'm reading the message correctly, I'll be here in a few days. I'm looking for the missing Condor. And they have no idea of the danger. In other words, it solves the mystery of why they're coming here. They're on a rescue mission. And we were treating them like enemies. I'm entering the cargo hold. Wish me luck, Astrogator.
Whether you like it or not, I'm coming to you, Rahitra. Okay, not quite at the bridge yet, but I'm getting closer, much closer, Rahitra. Must be the medical wing. Surprisingly, everything's still running. Was Rahitra here? Different sections. Different elevator cards. Ah, oh, they really overdo it with the security measures around here. I guess I still have some time to look around.
Ah, someone tried to eat soap. They considered even the most absurd forms of protection against a cloud, but and I don't blame them. Why the flies didn't wipe out all of my memory? Because I, I fell into a natural stupor. It makes some sense, I guess.
So apparently there's hope. We can... No. Wait. The memories won't come back. So much for the hope. Richard must have given them something to calm them down, as he did in the hideout. Huh. This soporific could be useful, although I prefer not to have to use it. trying to slow me down. I didn't design these elevators, if that's what you're asking. No, that's not it. You can clearly control them, but... <sighs> Never mind. Dear Ackfield, I'm ready to activate. Spherical thrower. Anti-probe. Rahitra! Here. Now that you're here, why don't you help me? With what? With the probes. You're over the battlefield. I do have visuals from the Cyclops here, but I can't do everything on my own. Oh, wait. Activity's increasing. They're coming. Are you helping or not? Come on, Yasna. It's about to start. I can't wait any longer. Uh, all right. Have it your way. Okay, I'm ready.
What am I looking at? It'll be... Uh, number five, a long-range one. It sees the entire perimeter. Better switch to a closer one. There's the Cyclops. Great. Force field activation. I confirm. Field active. The cloud's within reach. I'm shooting. The close range is dead. No wonder. It's boiling over there. The field is shrinking. Calm down, Yasna. It will hold. Whoa! Oh, beautiful. It's not a machine, it's the devil himself. I'm telling you. Losing connection. Do you see anything? They're creating a tight formation. A cyclone. Fucking shit! That can't be good, right? You tell me. Can't you see anything? The mid-range is dead. How about the long range? Uh, the long range worked. The cloud has stopped attacking. The Cyclops is... Huh? What is it doing? What did you see? Yasna! The cloud... won. What? You said... Don't count on the Cyclops anymore. Sarkis must have gone haywire. It shot down the probes. Now it's probably operating with a new goal. Like all those machines earlier. I, do, I don't understand. How? This is pure madness. Hey, at least we still have the Invincible. Don't mock me. I'm not mocking you, Rahitra. They really are flying here. They'll be here in about... Just hold on for a moment. I'll find out. I'm here, Astrogator. Unfortunately, I don't have good news. The Cyclops got out of control. What do you mean? Just like the other machines. Now, it'll wander around aimlessly. Or even worse. I had a feeling it would end like this. Do you know what Rahitra is planning now? I have no idea. But then I need to talk to him. You, sir? Yes. Can you switch me somehow? Okay, okay. I'm switching you to the bridge. He should be able to hear you now. Done. Please talk. Hello, Condor. This is Astrogator Novik, commander of the IC Dragonfly ship. I repeat, 
This is Astrogator Novik to the crew of the USCA Condor Cruiser. Please come in. <laughs> Could you stop with all these? Rohitra, Engineer Rohitra. Among our crew, I'm the last man standing, so to speak, which I guess makes me commander. <laughs> Who would have thought? In that case, I'm making an official request to join our forces to prevent the danger that threatens both sides. Oh, enough, Novik. That's enough. I agree, officially, and all that jazz. We're already taking steps to eliminate the threat. I'd even say that your crew is working on it pretty damn actively. We stopped playing defense and took the fight to them. The cloud suffered significant losses. As a counterattack, though, it disrupted our communications. <laughs> playing defense sounds a lot better than we're getting our asses kicked. Doctor, not now, please. No, it's true. Fighting against the cloud is exceptionally difficult. But any opponent can be defeated. All it takes is the right tool. Meaning what exactly? Let me remind you that we're dealing with a dispersed entity whose technological prowess is still unknown. And it has so far destabilized every machine sent its way. Even the most specialized ones. That's why I'll keep it simple this time. No electro brains, no memory, only pure energy. You still haven't answered me, Lyotra. Please, just tell me straight. What do you want? I'm arming the charges. Arming what? Explosives? Cluster munitions? Hydrogen. What? Rahitra? Are you serious? Damn right. I won't leave all this unresolved. How many warheads do you have? 54. From 30 kilos to 100 megatons. Oh. That's quite an arsenal. We really do have enough power. That's an understatement, Doctor. An amount of energy could rip the planet to pieces. I'm not an idiot. I won't send everything at once. I'm preparing eight smaller warheads to start with. And then? We'll see. Are you sure this is a good idea, Rahitra? <sighs> Listen, Yasna, I know how it must look to you. A hot-headed guy from the Alliance who wants to use nukes. But put yourself in my shoes. I have two dozen hours tops of complete situational awareness. I'm taking action here and now based on my best judgment. I don't know what will happen later. Where will I wake up? In what condition? So I'm going to avenge my people before that happens and ensure the safety of those who survived. They all deserve better than this. I know you understand. You like me. You would do anything for your crew. Look, I understand how you feel. But you can't approach this problem in terms of revenge. We are dealing with creations of necro-evolution. Dead evolution. And probably non-sentient ones. Taking revenge on the cloud is like... Whipping the ocean for sinking a ship? Exactly. Like Xerxes. We won't gain anything from a mindless attack. On the other hand, knowledge about these creations may turn out to be crucial in helping their victims. In helping you, Rahitra. My memory, you could... It's possible. Well, thank you. What for? I haven't done anything. <laughs> for reminding me of my mom. But as long as the cloud is a threat to others, my condition comes second. You, Rahitra, are still reasoning as though we were standing face to face with a thinking opponent. What if these beings are not our enemy at all? Oh, good one. Are you forgetting how many of us they've already killed? I will never forget, Rahitra. So I can't help feeling that they operate without any strategic plan. They attack from one incident to another. They're non-sentient, as the doctor put it. So what, they're stupid? And that's why they can't be hostile? It's absolute nonsense. Well, it could be. Yes, sir. What do you think? They're not stupid or hostile, but rather programmed to react. To radio waves, to brain waves. How? They're breaking down communications. To thwart the exchange of information. So... <sighs> They see no difference between a man and a machine? They take our brains for transmitters. That's why they're attacking us? Exactly. Wait, what species are you talking about? Dr. Yasna found various traces of conflict. 
lasting for hundreds of thousands of generations. Well, they certainly competed with the local fauna. We've seen fish that evolved to sense electromagnetic fields. And underground, I found fossils of lizard-like reptiles. Some of them must have been predatory. Well, I find it hard to believe that any prehistoric reptiles would possess our level of technology, not to mention an arsenal. Well, they wouldn't have, but there were other machines here as well. Other machines? I don't buy it. It's like some robot fables. No, Rachel, these are no fables. We have gathered evidence for all this. How did these machines even get here? Who built them? Our cyberneticist had a hypothesis before he lost consciousness. About the Lyrans. Yes, that one. Lyrans. Lyrans. It does ring a bell. Wasn't there a book about them? The Kraven's monograph. According to his notes, before the explosion of Zeta Lyra, the sixth planet of the system was inhabited by intelligent beings. Let's say their scout ship landed here and that a disaster occurred. Some kind of reactor explosion, chain reaction. Suffice to say, the wreckage that landed on Regis 3 had no living beings on board. <sighs> Only the machine survived. And then what? They started bashing in each other's tin heads? It doesn't make much sense to me. Machines don't have emotions. They don't argue. I'm sorry, but I don't know if there's any point in discussing this further. In short, we are facing an entity that has triumphed over countless adversaries, both organic and mechanical ones. I see no point in prolonging this discussion. For me, the matter is perfectly clear. It makes no sense to bomb these creatures. I would even say it's a greater danger to us than to them. But how else do you imagine defeating the cloud? Well, that's the thing. I don't. It's invincible. Yes, sir, do you agree? Well? Yeah, I very much agree. Another attack would make no difference. Just a few flies are enough for the cloud to regenerate. What if we destroy their nests? No, Ritra. Unless we want to destroy the entire planet, it's impossible to eliminate them all. And even then, there's no guarantee they would die in space. After all, the flies need nowhere, water, or food. Only solar energy. <sighs> but what else could we do, if not attack? We can leave this place and never come back. We have a lander. Sorry, but I'm not going anywhere. You on the other hand? I'm surprised you didn't evacuate already. Well, I had to make sure you won't do something you'll deeply regret. Let's drop it, all right? Further discussion is pointless. The charges are almost ready. We're here, trust for fuck's sake, be reasonable! You won't stand down, will you? An escalatory solution won't work. We'll only needlessly draw the cloud's attention. And I won't have you endanger my subordinate. Stop arguing. But, Doctor... No, Astrogator. You can't always get your way. And you, Rahitra, blow up this cloud yourself and the entire planet if you want. Just let me fly away first. Can you at least do that for me? Yes, I'll wait. I've prepared Hopper for departure, but there's still a matter of access to the landing pad on the back. Novik, how do you know about our landing pad? Well, you know what they say? Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Astrogator likes big ships. <laughs> right. Anyway, someone has to break the force field and open the dome. The field automatically deactivates when the dome is opened. It's the same switch on the control station. All right. Sounds simple enough. Okay, got it. Everything's ready, Astrogator. Copy that. Hopper is on its way. Good luck, Rahitra. Thanks. I'm gonna need it. Have a safe flight, Yasna. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. 
We've reconnected. Great. Hopper is just landing. Okay. I can still make it in time. You don't think the Hitra will start firing without warning, do you? I don't know. And I don't want to find out. Are you ready? I'll just close the hatch and... And what? There's nothing. I'm gonna buckle up now. Ready. I made it. Copy that. I'm starting the engines. Three, two... Field two. We might get cut off. I repeat, we might get cut off. 